Well, howdy, it's the ferret. Uh, it's 2023, it's about March. You're not supposed to do that on videos and date yourself, but I don't, I'm old and I don't care. I've been fishing a lot. Uh, in the springtime, I get the itch and I'm still fishing. But there's one thing I wanted to address. It's just been bothering me for a couple of months is angle of attack. You ever wonder why a stingray sticker off of a 200 pound stingray He's long and skinny because God designed it as a penetrating object to easily slide into the back of your heel and ruin your wade fishing day. <laughs> Stay tuned. This it represents the chest wall of a deer or a pig or elk or whatever you're shooting at. Angle of attack would be your flying stick slams into the object and must attack and cut through and penetrate preferably both chest walls but if you're shooting the old flipper flapper you're praying to only get in about this far and cut a huge hole and uh, <laughs> not shoot through the deer. My goal on this channel is maximum lethality. Maximum lethality is a razor sharp broadhead that goes through completely through your animal and goes out the other side and hits every organ and every possible blood vessel, artery, vein, alveoli, whatever it takes, the longest wound channel and no arrows in the animal so they don't feel it and run faster. Okay, now that we've established that, Let's talk about angle of attack. Dr. Ed explains in the Ashby reports that angle of attack in a very simplified version for your brain is riding a wheelchair up a wheelchair ramp. It's less work over distance to go up a long ramp than it is to go up a ramp like that. It would be a lot cheaper to have a ramp like that. It would be easier construction. Just doesn't work as good when you're in a wheelchair or et cetera to go up a ramp at a 45 degree angle when you can cut it way down to like 20 degrees and make it easier to do the work up the ramp. There's an engineer out there who owns a broadhead company and he starts rambling about this as a misnomer because it's based on the ability to push a wheelchair up a ramp and it has nothing to do with broadhead penetration. Uh, sometimes you gotta show, give the general public with varied skill sets. Some people are great at accounting, construction, finance, science, doctors, etc. Not everybody's got all the skills. So the idea in your head, everybody's been up a wheelchair ramp or seen one, that is easier to push a load up a long, slow plane than it is to go straight up the mountain is a good concept to understand what is happening when a flying stick approaches a target that it has to penetrate. Once again, wonder why that is designed like that and not big and wide and fat. Why, why isn't it like shaped like that? Because it would bounce off. These things are no fun. I cut it off the stingray we caught. <laughs> I didn't get it out of my body, but. Bumblebees, wasps, mosquitoes, this kind of thing in nature, long and skinny. There's a lot of broadheads that are shaped like shark teeth. And we got to agree on that. They're kind of, you know, like a little less steep angle of attack, but they have a crushing pressure behind them. And that's not the same you don't get more when when a shark bites something that's small it bites right through it when something bites it when it bites something large it bites harder just like us chewing steak or salad or noodles okay they you can adjust the pressure with your jaw muscles to make those cutting devices work it's a completely different physics equation when you have continuous pressure or you can add pressure we don't have that in fact 
every yard your arrow goes, your arrow is slowing down. I have a whole playlist on this. Uh, long range arrow performance. You might want to look at that. Okay, so I drew a picture here. And here's a line on the piece of paper. And that line represents this thing. Chest wall of whatever you're shooting at. And it basically represents the air broadheads approaching in this angle. Then I laid out four different styles of broadheads. Um, this is not a brand thing. This is just normal broadhead platforms. So whew, there's four different angles of attack for the broadheads here. And then I drew lines next to them to show how much angle there is as the broadhead approaches the target and how much work it has to do to penetrate. Now, the work thing, that's actually a physics equation and there are actually equations behind the term work. So that's a little bit of a misnomer, but this is more conceptual. If you look left to right, you can see that the angles of attack are less severe and more severe as you move left to right in this photograph. And logically speaking, you can see it goes from basically a long drill bit looking broadhead to more progressively steeper angles of attack until you get to the mechanical. I don't really care what broadhead you shoot. I mean, if you're on my channel or you're watching this video or you've seen any of my other videos, you know which, which side of the spectrum I'm leaning towards here, which is the lower angle of attack broadheads. But just let this rattle around in your head, you know, especially if you're shooting mechanicals and if you have really inconsistent performance. I just did a video on that. It'll pop up on a card up here. I'll have it in the link on the description discussing the kinetic energy required for mechanical broadheads and what the actual companies that make mechanical broadheads, how much kinetic energy they say is required to shoot their broadheads. I believe it's a direct correlation to this angle of attack thing. If you look at that picture where the mechanical broadhead is and you see how severe those lines are, you're talking about something approaching. It goes like this, deploys, and then it's approaching and pushing into the tissues at a very severe angle, sucking the energy out of the thing. So once again, this is just a very simple discussion of angle of attack, and I just want you to think about it when you're choosing broadheads. Most of you are gonna be somewhere in the middle. The most uh, wide selection of weights, quality, et cetera, are between the mechanical and the tough head, the long three to one, that is actually the head that was most heavily studied and came out, came out as the winner in the Ashby study on arrow lethality was the three to one tough head, the long, narrow, high angle of attack, low angle of attack, whatever it is, efficient angle of attack. <laughs> That's the biggest low angle of attack, but shh, don't tell anybody. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say today. I just want you to think about this when you're making broadheads. If you like selection. this content, I suggest you go to one of my playlists. Three that I might suggest. The quartering two shot series. My study of long range arrow performance, which is a study of energy and speed and everything as the arrow goes down range. And then also look at my high FOC arrow building playlist. It's got all oh, got great information. And to get you started on this crazy journey, there's a final thought here, and I want, here's the picture again. I want you to look at the blades in relation to that line. And then in your head, think about an axe, okay? When you're chopping with an axe, it's, a, it's bluntly hitting whatever, and it's a splitting device. It's not really even equivalent to a broadhead. What I want to get at on that is how severe the angles are, and the more you put the uh, blades in a more towards a 90 degree position, the blades, I'll pull a knife and just do this. The blade is, you know, chopping with a knife is really tough and eats up the blades and tears them up. So you're gonna have a knife 
you get an attack like this, and this is the attack angle, that edge itself is gonna take on more force than if it's in this, and it's gonna be more of a cutting instrument and slicing down the length of the blade as opposed to getting chopped right into the blade this direction. I'm sure most of you have tried to break the pelvis of a deer with a rock and a knife. <laughs> it eventually works. It's just really hard on the knife. And I hope you're not planning to skin or cut any meat after you do that because your knife is done. Because it's not designed to be, the angle of attack is not designed in this direction. It is a cutting instrument. So the more severe this angle, that cutting edge takes on the possibility of more damage because of the angle at which it hits bones. You say, well, I don't shoot the bones. Here's a couple of pictures of uh, critters I took pictures of because I'm weird. And when every time I go to uh, museums and stuff, I look at the skeletons and it's just, there's a lot of bones. So even a rib could, you take it, you take a rib at this direction, the blade angle, once again, your ribs this direction, okay? And it hits the rib like that, it's gonna cut through the rib, okay? As opposed to this direction, which exposes a ton of surface area. Look how much of that blade's on the rib, right? And could create more, more blade damage. Where I'm going with this is, if the blades may be sharp in the quiver. You may have honed them, but if you have a very severe angle of attack, the broadhead, let's say you just make a perfect shot right on the crease, no, no shoulder blade impact, no heavy bones. You're in a you know, tree stand 12 feet up. You shoot down and your broadhead hits a rib on both sides. Maybe the animal's a little quartered, right? So it hits a rib on the, on the impact side, on the right-hand side of a two blade, and it also gets it on the left. The more severe that angle, the more likely that blade is to dull because it's being driven into the rib as opposed to cutting it like this. So with like the tough head, it's gonna, it's gonna be more prone to cut the rib this direction than it is to slam into the rib like that. And this is gonna reduce your lethality. Especially if you shoot a really short broadhead, you'd only have that much cutting surface if you damage half the blade to the point that it's not sharp, then that's only half the blade to do the work after it breaches the impact thorax. This leads to longer blood trails, lower lethality. You don't want any of that. So you want the broadhead to punch through, stay sharp, and give yourself the best chance the blades don't get damaged, don't get rolled over, or just flattened. I believe this is one of the reasons why some of the mechanical stuff it really is erratic. It's not super consistent because that angle of attack is so severe and this is not good steel. I haven't seen a um, really good steel on a mechanical. I don't keep up. So if there's something out there, come on, get off me. I don't keep up with every broadhead on earth, even the fixed blade stuff. But you've got to be thinking about when it approaches a rib like that, that is a very severe angle for it to hit. And it's gonna take damage this direction as opposed, if it was way back down like this and stayed like that, it'd be more, uh, the ears here, you know, cut me some slack. If this angle of attack was like this, it would be more of a cutting action rather than, and that was handy, hang on, rather than a punching action, which was more prone to damage the blade and flatten it. Not to mention the amount of energy it sucks up because the chest wall actually is very flexible. You can push on yourself. Your rib cage is designed to be flexible. You couldn't breathe <laughs> if your rib cage didn't do this. If it was completely fixed and solid, you would have a hard time breathing. God rigged the system. The muscles in between your rib cage actually, one of them tightens when you inhale and then it smashes back 
and the other one tightens when you exhale and it pushes back out. It's crazy. You can read, read about that stuff. It's a fact. So that's that. I just want you to think about that stuff. The angle of attack. I'm not saying you got to shoot the, the tough head. I'm not saying any other thing here you got to shoot. But when you're making a broadhead selection, think about this stuff and think about how lethal the platform you have chosen could potentially be or how much failure you could be introducing into the system if the approach angle is real severe and the blades get trashed on impact. All right, that's all. Um, that's good. I got my cool shirt on here because I'm not stupid. Hey, uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that's fine. If you don't, I don't care. I, if you want to hit the thumbs up thing, there's some dinger bells down there. I'm you know, in my 50s. It's surprising I'm on YouTube. I just, social media stuff is kind of weird. Anyway, I appreciate you watching, and I'll be back with more logic and stuff later this fall, spring, whatever it is. I'm going to fish for the next six weeks or so. See ya.